In this installment, we're going to cover something that most people don't think is associated with aircraft maintenance. Is the FCC growl still relevant? Hey, welcome back to this video of Ask the FA Question. My name is Bruce Brissett. And if this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell to keep informed of new videos on this site. Let's talk about the Federal Communications Commission General Radio Operator License, or the FCC Growl. I've had my FCC license since 1989 when it was required as a condition of employment for me to work at America West Airlines as an avionics technician. I remember at the time, the test questions were not published, and there were only a couple guides out there that covered the basic questions. After reading a study guide for about a week, I had to fly to L.A. to catch one of the few test sites that were offered around the country by the FCC to provide the written. I passed the test on the first try, but it was no cakewalk. The study guide only guessed at the questions, and there were many that I had not seen since my days at aviation, uh, avionics school in the Air Force but I passed. The purpose of the license for my employment at the airlines was twofold. First, were the FCC requirements for radio maintenance that I might be performing at America West Airlines as an avionics technician. Under FCC rules, a radio te technician is required to have the growl in their immediate work area if that technician is required to adjust, maintain, or internally repair FCC licensed radio telephone transmitters in the aviation, maritime, and international fixed published radio services. This is especially true for those avionic technicians who work in the back shops. The back shops were people were actually working in the radios. But I was hired to work in the line support group. I was never going to be inside the box, I thought. Why did I have to obtain the FCC for my job? Well, that brings me to the second reason most airlines require the FCC growl for avionics technicians, and that would be in lieu of having an airframe rating. Early on, when the unions were getting involved in labor negotiations for airline mechanics, one of the benefits being negotiated for was a license premium, meaning that a mechanic who held both an airframe and power plant certificate would receive an extra 50 cent per hour boost in pay. While not wanting to be left out, the RNEs or radio electronic technicians of the day wished to have the license incentive also. So the FCC license was chosen for two excellent reasons. The FA at the time didn't have, and still doesn't have, minimum certification standards for avionics technician. So the FCC was the best solution at the time. Fast forward to today, now the FC is still required due to the original rules governing radio maintenance. So, this license is required not only for those technicians working in back shops and for avionics manufacturers, but also to maintain aircraft radar stations. An FCC ground is required for technicians who maintain locally produced radar networks. Uh, like the Cactus Network used by the America West Airlines when I was there. This system was designed to talk to crews between ground stations and aircraft. Now, while not expressly required by FCC rules, many organizations use the FCC growl as a measure of knowledge for a technician applying for a job maintaining radios. Uh, these radio systems include those for police departments, firefighter organizations, taxi cabs, school districts, all sorts of company-based radio systems. So the answer to the question, is the FCC growl still relevant in aviation? And the answer is, yes it is. If you wish to work in the field of radios and electronics for anyone using or maintaining radio equipment, then you need to start studying for the test. Hey, thanks for checking out this video, and until next time, keep it safe.